Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. Hey, welcome back. Say hello on Twitter at Richard Serrett, S-Y, because I love you, R-E-T-T. Mary Joyce is the uh, the founder at uh, SkyShipsOverCashiers.com, SkyShipsOverCashiers.com, journalist, UFO researcher, the, the new book, Spy in the Sky, Secrets and Cover-Ups on Earth and Beyond, containing, well, it's just chock full of uh, images captured uh, using just a computer uh, screenshot. Uh, and also the the very popular device Google Earth, which not only is pointed at at the Earth, uh, but also at Mars and uh, the Moon, and it's uh, just filled again with these images of artifacts uh, that appear to have intelligent design behind them, and uh, are, are are in places you wouldn't expect them, huge entrances into the uh, into the interior of Mars, uh, into the interior of uh, Antarctic. Uh, I will talk a little bit later about some of these remarkable artifacts found on the ocean floors. All right. Uh, let's go back to, again, these images are, uh, at coast coast am.com highlight carousel. Just click on Mary Joyce images. And if you go down, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four image number five. So we're back to the Antarctic and, uh, this one, the, the the line under it says, the first of five ancient cities found emerging from Antarctica's melting ice. Uh, just describe what, what we're seeing here. It's a little blurry, um, but it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, straight lines and right angles. And uh, this is not, does not look to be natural, this formation. What are we, what are we seeing here, Mary? Um we believe that this is an ancient city that's appearing because the ice is melting so quickly. And um, these, these it, they look like the walls of uh, city structures. And as you know, in, in ruins, the, the rooftops disappear and the walls are the, the last thing standing. Uh, and they're different sizes uh, of boxes or squares or rectangles, uh, and just like you would expect in a city where everything is not uniform. Um, I, I need to give credit to a, a, a woman. Her name is uh, also Mary. It's Mary Hall. And uh, she, um, at a very young age, had a stroke and for a while was bedridden. And uh, she started using Google Earth and started exploring uh, Antarctica. And she, uh, it took her four months to find the, the picture that uh, I've sent to you. Uh, but once I learned about that, I started doing my own exploring, and between the two of us, we have found the ruins of five ancient cities that are appearing in the ice. And that first one that she saw, it's amazing that she found it because she zoomed in on something that looks like just a black crack in the, in the ice of Antarctica, and uh, that's where she found this. And once I learned her trick, then I began to find out um, ways to find some for myself. Uh, this is astounding if our conclusion is correct because Antarctica is supposedly been covered with ice for 34 million years, according to most scientists. Um, that would make these ruins the oldest in the world. And if you want to make a comparison, everybody thinks about the Great Pyramid being really old. It's less than 5,000 years old. Compare that to 34 million. There is just no comparison at all. And while all this ice is melting more rapidly, uh, they've also found um, uh, fossils of an ancient uh, tropical forest. Uh, dinosaur bones have been found. Uh, Antarctica was once quite a different continent. Right. And uh, you mentioned that, uh, that Mary Hall uh, discovered this by peering into a, into a crack in the ice in Antarctica. And then you've... Uh, you put a yellow push pin 
in a, a photo marking the, uh, the city's location. Again, and you've got the coordinates for the site, 76 degrees, 8 minutes, 10 seconds south, 162 degrees, 28 minutes, 39 seconds east. Uh, have you gone back to check that image to see if it's still visible or whether it's been conveniently blurred out? Um, all of the ones from Antarctica are there. The only one that changed was that uh, smaller entrance into Antarctica. Um, in the book itself, I show um, before and after pictures because from my own experience, I saw uh, a deliberate blurring of some of these uh, cities that we found. So that in itself indicates that it's not just some kind of natural phenomena. If somebody's going to the trouble to distort them and, uh, you know, make it look like they don't exist. Uh, sticking with Antarctic, and now this one is is in the book, but it's not on the carousel, I don't believe. Let me just... No, no it I is only not. took one from there, so what right. other one do you want to talk about? Uh, well, this one is on page 30, uh, page 30, Mary, and this is the disc-shaped object, okay. also found in Antarctica, and... Um, it's uh, located at 66 degrees, 16 minutes, 24 seconds south, 100 degrees. I mean, if people are listening and they, you know, they jot this down and they want to try and look on Google Earth, again, 66 degrees, 16 minutes, 24 seconds south, 100 degrees, 59 minutes, 4 seconds east. And there you will see on the, uh, you will see a, uh, a disc shaped object. There it is, as plain as day. Tell me more about this. How did, did you find this one? Um, I think somebody gave me a clue on that one, but I, I, I went and found it for myself. I hear about some of these things, but I have to find them myself before I decide to use them. And this one is, by UFO standards, is kind of small. It's uh, about 60 feet in diameter. 60 feet in diameter. Right, and it has a raised rim all the way around the edges. And in the picture you see just slightly more than half of it because some of it's still uh, buried beneath. Uh, I don't know what it's buried beneath, but you can only see a, a portion of it. Right, or it's tucked under uh, some sort of a, a rock formation or an outcrop or something, hard to say. It's, I can't tell from this photo, but obviously it's under something. My word. And that's still there? People that's can go and there. find it? That's still there. My word. When you find something like this or when you see it for the first time, uh, I mean, do you knock over your coffee? What happens? Uh, no, I don't. I've gotten used to that. But uh, no, I don't do anything that drastic for fear I'll destroy my computer. But um, uh, I get excited about some of these. I mean, the, first, the this idea of ancient cities from 34 million years ago is just incredible. Why does somebody want to hide that from the public? I do not know. Um, but they do. Well, <laughs> I think we can speculate as to why. I mean, if you're talking about uh, ruins of an ancient city popping up out of the ice, uh, and it has been cu- how long? How 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 old would they be? Did you say thirty four million? Uh, scientists tend to believe that it's um, been covered in ice for at least thirty four million years. The smallest number I've ever heard from any scientist was it's been covered for 23 million years. So even the smaller number is, you know, staggering. Right. Well, there's your reason. I mean, that does not fit the uh, the official narrative of, you know, the history of our world and our place in it and who we are and what we are and where we came from. And why uh, they there's... do that, I don't know. I mean, they hide the fact that uh, uh, the Smithsonian's been hiding, hiding uh, skeletons of giants um uh, uh, since the late 1800s. So why? Why do they want to hide all that? Precisely. And Precisely. also another thing I want to bring to the attention about these cities, some of them are organic in the way that they like would meander like cities do today. Uh, they'll develop along a river or along a ridge. And, and some of the pictures you can see that um, organic development of these box-shaped buildings um, just like we would see today. Let me see where else can let's uh, let's go back to the highlight carousel at coast to coast am dot com. 
And let me see, this is, let's go down one, two, three, four, five, six, right below the ancient city image uh, found on Antarctic. Now we're going to the floor of the ocean. And um, this is located in the Gulf of California. Uh, It's a, um, well, people can check it out there again. The Gulf of California on the ocean floor. Where is this just off of, uh, off of the uh, Baja Peninsula or where is this located? The Baja uh, Baja Peninsula and um, west of Mexico. And it's, as you said, in the Gulf of um, uh, California. All right. So on the floor of the ocean, off of the Baja Peninsula, you see um, this, these geometric designs, imprints in on, or on the ocean floor. And then underneath that image, you have a photograph of the Spokane Airport runways. And it it does. By comparison, you if you look at the Spokane or Spokane Airport runway, uh, it looks exactly like this impression on the ocean floor. What would an airport or a runway be doing on the off the east coast of the Baja Peninsula? Um, as as I know, you know, uh, I I explored from Alaska down to Baja uh, with Google Earth, just searching the the coastal areas along uh, the Pacific, and found quite a few different structures. I found this one personally the most fascinating, which is the reason I sent you those pictures, um, and. Even though there's a great similarity between, well, I'll, call, I'll call it two airports, the size difference is incredible. The longest runway in, on the planet right now is just slightly more than three miles long. That structure that was found beneath, uh, you know, beneath the ocean is 89 miles long. Proportions and, and lines look so similar, but 89 miles long is incredible. So either... We have it, either those are uh, ancient alien um, uh, runways, or uh, there may have been a very uh, different sized species of people that lived, uh, let's say, in Lemuria. Uh, that may not be so, uh, uh, may not be mythology, and people will know it as Mu or Pan or Lemuria. Uh, the mythology says there was an ancient continent that sank into the Pacific Ocean. When we find uh, so many ruins along the coast of um, the Pacific, uh, you begin to wonder if those um, uh, stories are true. Right. In other words, uh, if this is what, what lies on the ocean floor off the coast of the Baja Peninsula that looks remarkably like an airport runway, this was at one point uh, above the water level. But then, you know, if we're talking about ETs, they wouldn't need a runway for their craft. I mean, they, if, you know, these are gravity defying uh, vehicles, we believe. So they wouldn't need a runway. But if there was some other type of civilization that had the, uh, the power of flight and these were, you know, huge craft, they would need obviously a much longer airport, 89 feet, or sorry, 89 miles That's in length. Huge. That's just 89 huge. miles. And there's, there's a number of structures. There's a structure off of um, uh, Coronado Island, and that island itself, I think, is about two and a half miles um, from north to south or in length. This other structure is twice that length. It's it's just about parallel to um, the island of Coronado, but it's huge, and it's it's absolutely huge. So whatever was going on in ancient times. It appears that the whoever was living there had to be uh, monstrous compared to us. I could be wrong, but it just certainly fuels that thought. Right. Um, I'm looking at that uh, the images again, not on the carousel, but in the book, the uh, Spy in the Sky, page 44. And this is this the one that I, I think I, earlier I described it when we were talking off air or, or on another program. It looked to me like a bit of like look a, a, a giant cockroach or some kind of an insect but i mean it's got it looks like it's got you know a head and a tail but the the uh, the tail portion what i'm describing as a tail portion is it, it it looks like it has portals portals around the outer edges 
Is that well, what is that the one off of Coronado? Yes, it is. And the what I would call the northern part of that is a very rounded shape in the front. It's very tubular. Yes. Um, and the bottom part of that may simply have been uh, something that's been destroyed. I don't know. But oh, I see. There, yeah. it, one view of it from the side um, looks like evenly spaced spaces going around it, almost like there's a portico that goes around this thing. And exactly. Uh, even from above, because the outer walls are slanted outward, um, the portico openings look like dots, evenly spaced when you look straight okay. down on it. UFO researcher, journalist Mary Joyce, and uh, the website skyshipsovercashiers.com. The new book, Spy in the Sky, Secrets and Cover-Ups on Earth and Beyond. Are you ready to take some calls, Mary? Go ahead. Let's see what we can do with them. All right. Let's find out. Uh, we go west of the Rockies. Chris in Los Angeles. Chris, welcome to Coast. Hello. Hi there. Go. I, um, I really appreciate this show. Uh, I went fishing in Oxnard not too long ago, and um, I started looking at the area on the map at the Channel Islands. An anomaly off the coast of Oxnard, bigger than the Channel Islands. Yeah, just south, just south of the Channel Islands. Just, uh, and if you just, I, I don't have the exact coordinates. I'm not looking at it right at the moment, but it is. It's it's larger than Catalina. It's larger than the Channel Islands. It's a circular shape, just a little south of um, of the Channel Islands. I it, think it's. I think it's all okay. close to Oxnard. Now, you don't have it in front. Obviously, you're driving. You don't have it in front of you now, but did you take a screenshot? No, but I can. I can I can pull over and uh, take a screenshot. No, no, not, I'm not asking you to do it now. I'm just saying, like, you did you did you preserve it for posterity? In other words, did you make a note of the coordinates? Did you take a screenshot when you first saw it? Uh, I didn't. I okay, didn't. But did, you have the uh, coordinates, it's though? It's been there for a while. Ah, okay. Does that sound uh, familiar, Mary? Have you e ever run anything or into anything uh, off the coast of Oxnard, California? Um, I found a number of things along the coast there. Um, if he can uh, send the coordinates or something uh, to either you or me, I'll check it out. I don't know if it's one I've found already or not. If not, I will um, uh, snoop around there and see if I can find something. All right, Chris, I, yeah. I would suggest that you reach out to Mary through the website, and that's skyshipsovercashiers.com, skyshipsovercashiers.com. Skyships over cashiers. I will. I will do that. Uh, and it, it doesn't. It's so large, it doesn't look man-made. That's, that's it's perfectly thing. circular? Perfectly circular. Circular. Right, yeah. circular. And, uh, and if I'm to assume that, some of the sides of it were edges, like cliffs or something, then it would go down very deep as well. Uh, but uh, I'll do that, okay? I'll, I'll find those coordinates, and I will and I will send it to you. But thank you guys Fantastic. very much. Thank you. Thank, you Fa thank you, Chris. Thank you. See, we're, we're recruiting an entire army of space detectives <laughs> uh, for you, Mary. That's wonderful. All right. Uh, east of the Rockies, Olivia is in Austin, Texas. Olivia, good evening. Good morning. Welcome to Coast. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> good morning. Um, thank you. I, I want to say, Richard, I, I really um, enjoy your hosting. Um, thank you very much. Don't you imagine other people are finding these things on Google, too, even before you're, you're um, suggesting they do it? There must be a lot of people that see these things, huh? Well, after Coast to Coast tonight, I'm sure there'll be a lot more. Yeah, there'll be a lot more. That's right. Okay, well, thank you again, and thank you for your bravery and all. Thank and uh, that's all. Thank you, Olivia. I appreciate the call and your kind uh, your kind remarks. Uh, she said, thank you for your bravery. Mary, do you ever feel like, um, or have you ever ever received any, I don't know, Pushback, strange calls in the middle of the night. Mary, don't do that. Um, uh, no, I, I, but the, I've had one story, which I know I've told you. Uh, it's probably too long for this late in the show. But uh, I did have a whole lot of things disappear uh, from my computer, and they were only the things related to UFOs. Had a um, um, 
an expert in computers come in and he couldn't even find anything or any trace of it even in the bowels of the computer. So that would probably be the most uh, uh, troubling thing that's happened. And that was some time ago. Uh, all right, let's see who we're going to go to next. Uh, let's say hi to, is it Yana or Jana in Auburn, Washington? Right. Thank you. Hi, I is that Yana or Jana? Jana, Jana. Jana. All right, Jana, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. I have still evening. But anyway, I was hoping that Mary was making sure Elon Musk was getting this book. Since he's planning trips up there, he can look for your bookmarkers for the sites you found on Mars. Uh, excellent <laughs> idea. Excellent <laughs> idea, yeah. And then looking at the underground at Baja, it looks at the bottom right corner like the Statue of Liberty is standing there. Mm, I'll have to go back and take a look at that. I don't recall that. And then uh, um, you said it's 89 miles of um, runway, runway type yeah. of thing. That's correct. Long ago, they said we were seated. And long ago, maybe they needed that runway to get to a portal or a star date and get through it. Hmm. Uh, we're, it, none of us knows, but it certainly is big, and it was certainly used for uh, for some kind of flying vehicle, I would think. All right. Um, yeah, indeed, indeed. Bonnie, thank you for, or sorry, Jenna, thank you for that in uh, Auburn, Washington. Uh, let's just keep rolling here. People uh, are really excited about this, not surprisingly. Uh, Richard is up in Anchorage, Alaska. Richard, welcome to Coast. Oh, we lost Richard. That's too bad. All right. Uh, how about another Rich in Redwood City, California? Yes. Good morning, Rich. Uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, I was wondering, uh, did, did your guest indicate that the, there there still is a Schwabenland base in Antarctica or that there isn't? Uh, I was just wondering whether that's what her take on that is, and my other inquiry has well, to don't do, do with one that. person yeah. at a time, or I'll forget it. Um, oh, okay. I, I have done. Uh, um, oh, let's see, Werner von Braun. I've gotten information from uh, an astronaut who became a friend of his, and I was a, and I got to know the astronaut, and he said that uh, um, that still exists down in Antarctica, and it was Hitler's um, Shangri La. Does that answer? All right. Does that answer? Yeah, and then uh, my other inquiry had to do with Gary McKinnon in England, who who hacked into classified UFO materials. Do you remember that? I'm familiar with it well, a little bit with him. Yes. Is that is that uh, are they trying to extrad- They were trying to extradite him to put him on trial here in the U.S. And 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 so what became of that? I know George wanted to get him interviewed. But that was about a year or two ago. I don't know how the, the project never came off. Yeah, if memory serves, I think he beat the extradition. I'm not 100% sure of that. But again, yes, he had hacked into, what, Pentagon or uh, some agency's computers and found evidence uh, for uh, like a, a deep space platform uh, and, and, and uh, pilots for these craft that were going to these deep space platforms and so forth. Now, there's a brave person. <laughs> I'd say. I'd say. All right, Rich in Redwood, thank you for that. I think uh, I can squeeze one more in quickly. If you uh, if you move quick, Jared in Myrtle Beach, we can get your question in. Good morning. Welcome to Coast. Yeah, great show. Uh, my first time calling in. I've been listening for uh, a couple of years now. But um, so I live in Myrtle Beach, and I was going to ask one question, but another thing popped in my mind. Right behind me where I live is the Carolina Bays. Are you guys familiar with those? I am. Yes. Yeah, and uh, my brother is the one that got me into it because he looks around on Google Maps for a meteor uh, site to try to find. He lives up in New Hampshire, and he found a couple up there. But, um, yeah, the Carolina Bays, they're directly by my house, and they're really interesting. If you guys, if anybody goes on Google Maps and just takes a look at Myrtle Beach, there's this all these almost oval-shaped indents in the earth all moving in clearly one direction. And uh, it's a real – Really not where anywhere else on the East Coast am I, but uh, 
was just making me think of, you know, people to talk about looking at the map. Take a look at Myrtle Beach. Um, and uh, it's a really interesting find. Very easy to find. That's a good idea. All right, Jared. Thank you for that. Well, there you have an assignment for tomorrow over breakfast coffee. <laughs> Mary, check out the uh, uh, check out um, the Myrtle Beach in the Carolina Islands or the Carolina Bays, rather. Wow. Uh, I don't know where those two hours went, but that was absolutely riveting. Thank you so much, Mary. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I want your uh, listeners to know that it was a nudge from you that uh, got me putting all this together into a book. Well, that was uh, that was a tap in. I mean, you you went to all this work, and I know you posted them on your website. Some of these originally, so it was just, hey, why don't you put them in a book? That's all I did. Well, I just reminded you of something you, did, you already enough to get me going on it. Well, fantastic. Well, we're all the the the, the richer for it. I mean that in uh, in terms of you know a curiosity. Uh, all right, Mary Joyce. Journalist, UFO researcher, cashiers, uh, sorry, skyships over cashiers.com. And keep just uh, keep checking with Amazon. They'll get it restocked. Don't give up. Be persistent. All right, Mary, thank you again. Thank you. You have a good show for the rest of the evening. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.